Today's mission should we choose to accept it? Okay, so today we're working on photographs and the photograph that I've selected is this wonderful photograph of Mark Ruffalo. Uh, I should explain the reason that I chose Mark Ruffalo is because he has what I consider to be a very interesting face. That is, when he's in a neutral facial position, he's got, it actually, like, although he doesn't tend to play this kind of character, he's got the standard kind of action hero, chiseled jaw, the generic handsome Hollywood look, but you never see him like that. And the reason you never see him like that is because in most of the films that he plays, he plays other than that. He plays like a, a sort of rough, rougher kind of person, someone more grizzled, maybe a scientist like he does in uh, the Avengers films. He, he, he tends to sort of... Um, he scruffs up well, let's put it that way. And so that's, that's why I picked him. And I like this picture because it's quite an expressive face, so it'll be something for me to get massively wrong. Now, the temptation is to start with a circle and do the head that way. Which I'm going to do because that's the method I've been using. But I, I am tempted to just start with the profile and work my way in. But just, just to keep myself grounded, I am going to start with a circle, which I've been doing so far. I've been watching a lot of videos recently from people who say never start with a circle. Because if you start with a circle, then, then that, that way madness lies. Um, for reasons that I don't really fully understand. <laughs> so if we consider that to be the... the the sort of the base of the... Oh, you see, because now I have to make that size up. Maybe that's why they say no circles. But if the top of the head ends around here, then that would be that part of the face. And as it starts to crest in, we get this little indentation here. And that's when it kind of comes down. This is another three quarters view, isn't it? And it comes down to this very square looking jaw. Is that about the right... It's a very, very curved until that point. And that kind of comes up here. See, that, that's almost like the halfway line there. So the face that we're sort of working with is this, this area here. And that kind of comes in like a... Like that, because it's a clenched jaw, you see. So we've got this extra line up here. Now, this indentation gives us a fantastic... Um, sort of anchor point to use because obviously that's where the eyes have to go on the center of that indentation. This already looks wrong I think because that's not square enough because he has this sort of the, the chin kind of just comes in a little bit there and he has this sort of dimply looking thing and then up to up like that and there's, there's almost like a sort of three line version of that chin where it comes up like so. I've, one thing I should say about this is that I'm not using my superpower today. Um, not a lot of people know that I have a superpower. I'm going to put that, that edge of the head in there because that, that might be useful at some point later. Not a lot of people realise I have a superpower. It's not the Hulk superpower, but rather it is a sort of ability to cross my eyes in a weird way. Um, and I can basically overlay two images together, which is why I've not put them the same height. I've not drawn them the same size. And the reasoning behind that is because it would be so easy for me to just cross my eyes, lay that over there and just trace the lines onto it, which maybe would be a good way to do it, but uh, not today. Not today, because we're trying to construct this the proper rational way. So the eyebrow does actually, it hits right there and it comes over this sort of direction, but it ends quite, quite quickly because that immediately goes into nose. And the other eyebrow sort of comes around here. These these eyes are very... It almost all comes together into one point. With the eyes. That eyebrow does, does kind of come down here a little bit more. It's got this sort of archway on it, which I sort of like. I'm trying to be very loose with this. I, I've sharpened my pencil so the lines are a bit clearer. But I'm trying to be very loose with it. That's, that's the wrong line there. That is not the right line. My, my uh, relaxation sound today is more rain. 
I couldn't use rain yesterday because Becky hates it. She absolutely hates rain noises. Um, I feel like that's actually, that's already too far away from, from where the brow is. I feel like the brow should be so low down that it's it's almost impacting on it. Because that, that eye actually comes into this point here. Like that, and this brow. See, it's hard to tell there where the, where the brow is and the darkness is, because there's kind of a darkness there, but I think the brow goes there. Um, we have a sort of a cheek line to there, and the nose kind of comes above it, then goes past. I've got to be very careful not to let that go on a tangent, because this has a sort of bulbousness. Is that enough? No, that, that nose does not look big enough. That nose does not look big enough. See, if we consider that to be the size of the chin, I'm, I'm going to say the mouth would be around this height to about here. So the nose comes down to like here, so that that bulbous part would be around here-ish and kind of come down to there. That's very wrong already. I can tell that's very wrong already. Whew. Yeah, photographic references. They said that'll be a that'll be a great way to learn. They said. So this this eye has got a lot of lines coming in. I'm going to clean that up later. This this sort of almost comes in around the same height as that. Cause there's an angle change there, and it sort of comes into a an almost thing, and then it, it kind of goes in and then down to a curve like that. That's the shape I'm going to stick with for now. And then over here on this side we have a mouth line that, that sort of that's a cheek line comes in down here. This looks more like Nicolas Cage to me, but I'm <laughs> I think that all, all faces that are squinting and, and gnashing their teeth end up looking a bit like Nicolas Cage. So this this kind of comes in around here. And then we have the nostril part. There-ish, I guess. So that looks like that sort of almost comes comes right back on itself, and this part comes under it. There's a kind of. Is that too wide? Is that too wide? Because that no, because that lands in the middle of the nostril. Yeah, that that would be there. That would be just there. Well, we won't be able to see that line in the final image because that's that's a very faint line. But yeah, I'm kind of pleased with that. I'm kind of pleased with that. That's good. So then we have the shadow of the nose comes down a little bit, and then we have just here, under the centre line, yeah, under the, underneath the centre line there. Which the chin's too far over, isn't it? Because the centre line should go straight down there, through the middle, through the centre. The centre line here down, through the centre of the nose. Actually, no, because that is kind of a little bit over to one side. But the dimple should be about here-ish, I think. If the dimple's about there chin comes up to here and there's actually that, that kind of comes in a bit there that is a little shallower than that side and then this comes in here yeah yeah that's that's good I like that and then this comes out of this part of the nostril and only down a little way because that's kind of where it's going to meet the mouth maybe a little further that way yeah It's a curve. Oh, I've done that line really, really hard, and I shouldn't have done it that hard. But that's about right there. So the mouth comes up to meet that. There's almost like you can see an, a kind of invisible line there where the mouth kind of comes up to meet it. This is the open part of the mouth I'm talking about now, and that goes down to there, and then kind of kind of swoops up to this then. And that does practically meet that, but there's a second mouth line that kind of comes in just there. So we've got a separate mouth and cheek intersection there. And now this, the, the really interesting part here is that this part of his lip, the top edge of the lip, almost meets that area of the lip. So that's that's kind of where the the, the lip and the and this comes down here. You have a 
sort of is that right is that should that go a little further maybe yeah, let's let's get the rest of this line that is a nice smooth arc that kind of comes down to meet there oh you see now here's a mistake that i've made this side of the mouth comes up to here which is above and that one is that below because it kind of meets almost on a level on a level on the actual image so this this line should go a lot flatter and meet there and there's kind of above that because this this line does come up here and kind of almost swallow the lip into it and then here on the center line we have the teeth and there's, there's a really interesting facet of the teeth which is that I'm just I'm not going to be very accurate with these teeth for the time being Teeth are always a difficult one because if you draw too many lines on the teeth, it, it looks very strange indeed. But the teeth kind of disappear into there, so that's, that's kind of where the teeth end. And most of these lines aren't visible, you just have a little bit of gum line there, and most of these lines won't actually be visible on the final picture. And this part here, you only, only really see the underside of these teeth. There is a line there, which I'm going to try and get in when I do the inking and this gum comes up to here another line there and then that kind of that all just disappears into darkness there all right feeling good so far feel like the nose is very tall actually now that now that I'm, I'm looking at it I have made the nose a lot taller than the actual face um, not sure there's a way to fix that other than moving the eyes down Am I going to do that to rescue it if I move the eyes down a bit and then the head will be too big? But you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to throw caution to the wind and I'm going to rescue this by moving the height of the eyes and changing the angle of the nose. Because the nose should not be the same height as the chin. The nose should be far less than that. The nose should end kind of there. And that, that would put the brow line there. So this indentation would be there which most of these bits can still stay the same with the brow there and the eye coming into this point kind of more of an arch there and a flatter underside in fact that almost curves like that where that eye is and this one again has there's a, a sort of lower but again, that, that comes in at the same kind of angle, doesn't it? It kind of comes in like this. You have a line here and here, all coming into this one point. You have a few lines coming out of there. This mouth looks more disgusted than happy. I've noticed that, that, that there's... Why is that? Why does it look more disgusted than happy? I think, have I not pushed it out far enough? That seems about right. That hmm. maybe it's, they say that smiles are more in the eyes than anything, anyway. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with the idea of doing this with eyes only. So we have this eye sort of shape here. Come into there. If, if Mr. Ruffalo is, uh, is watching this, I'm very sorry for everything I'm doing to you right now. <laughs> this is a decision that I have to make is whether I'm going to snitch tag the, uh, the, the people that I'm drawing into this. Whether I'm going to include them in, in the, the tweet that I send. Because I send all these on Twitter. So if I include them on, if I include him on Twitter, he... He's the sort of guy that he might actually see this. I maybe picked a really bad one to do for my first photo reference day. Um, but you know, this is this is just how how the world works. Is is you you take a shot and you screw it up, and that's that's life. Now that's kind of done there. There's, there's a sort of line there, but I'm probably not going to capture that. These lines here. Maybe I'll try and do. 
some sort of shading there, but I probably won't. Now, if we move all the way over here now, after that bit of cheek to about here, this is where the, the face kind of comes in. And I've, I've learned that that should be kind of flattened off, so that, that head shouldn't end there, it should end there. Uh, but we need an ear about here now. So kind of level with the, the eye line is where that comes in. And it's kind of a... It's got the kind of lobe that just comes straight up. That's a little bit higher than the mouth there. It's got the kind of lobe that comes straight up from the head. And... Uh, it's got this interesting kind of double lobe line there. So you've got that and you've also got the interior one. And then a kind of... It's almost like a that sort of shape, but this disappears into the hair. And this is the thing I need, I need to capture next, is the hair, which is going to be tricky. Um, sorry, that was me scratching my head, I just realised my hand went in front of the camera there. So, <laughs> so I feel like I've captured the, the, the ear now, and, and I now I need to capture the shape of this hair, which it's got kind of a, a sort of curliness that comes around here, there's a few loops of hair here. I really did pick um, a fascinating haircut to begin with because, as you know, I am terrible at drawing hair. So this has a kind of it sort of builds up from the from this bit of the head. So this kind of comes down here. See that that's all you really see of that. And there's a few loopy parts there. At least, at least with this, I can actually fill most of it in when I'm inking. It's got a kind of this shape. And I, I say that kind of thing a lot, this shape, and then I, and then I draw something, because ultimately that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I've got. I, like, I, I don't have names for any of these shapes. And one book that I've read suggests that having names for the shapes is a bad thing anyway, because uh, it's, the book's called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. I forget who, who wrote it. Um, but it says that by trying to codify the bits of the face that you draw, into names of, of bits, of parts, what you end up doing is kind of... The hair comes all the way back here, doesn't it? And it's sort of... See, I don't know what shape the hair would be under there. I'm going to assume that it just kind of comes around that way with a few loops and a kind of curl there. A lumpy bit there. And I should probably credit the photograph because I got this from Wikipedia, this photograph of Mark Ruffalo. Um, and I can't remember the photographer's name, but I will make sure that it's included in the video at this point. I probably won't have time to upload this tonight, uh, but I will endeavour to get it up tomorrow. I think... Terrifying though this sounds, I think I'm almost ready to start start inking this travesty. Um, now, just final mistakes that I want to fix. This part of the nose is not close enough up there because I've put this line. This this nostril should come to like here. That that should be the same height as that one. Haha, <laughs> good catch, Stacy. So let's rework this part of the nose because that should go there. Meaning that this curl over should come this way. And this should then come to approximately here. I think that's better. I think that is actually a better, better, a better fit, as it were. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm ready to ink. I, th I think I am ready to make this horror show permanent. <sighs> yeah. Let's do this. Now hang on a second. Before I do... Things that I've got wrong. This hair is too far over that way because this is actually quite a lot thinner than that, isn't it? Because this there should be like a whole swathe of face up there after this... This cheek line should... Oh god, actually, yeah, that, 
That one should go up there and this one should come up to like here. So all of that is wrong. This, yeah, so that one should go quite a lot closer to the mouth actually. Because it almost curls in around it. And this one then needs to come up to about here. Not that I'm going to be filling these in, but I'm, I'm trying to get at least a semblance of correctness to this face. The ch oh, the See, here's the mistake that I've made. This chin is way too low. This needs to come up to like... If, if that's that's there, this one needs to come up to here and this one needs to come this way. There, that, that'll that'll sort that out. That's, that's fixed that. So... What you can't see now is the calm before the storm. Not that storm, but the storm in my brain. Because <laughs> I'm just trying to trying to get any any last relative details for where bits of this face should go. I was watching a video by a comic book artist called Terry Moore. I did uh, many things, but I only know him for Strangers in Paradise. Um, and it was about how to create consistent characters, like how to produce the same face over and over. Because that's the problem that I had, you know, with the things I've been doing the last couple of days, is attempting to reproduce the same face that I just kind of invented on the fly. And what he says on there is that... The, the best way to create a face that's the same as a face you've seen before is to, in fact... Um, get the ratios of sh the sizes of the, the placement of objects correct. Because the actual little details, like I spend so much time on this mouth, nobody knows what Mark Ruffalo's teeth look like. I mean, Mark Ruffalo probably does, maybe. Is he married? Does he have a wife? Husband? I don't know. I imagine his close friends have a vague idea of what his teeth look like. But other than that, nobody knows what Mark Ruffalo's teeth look like. <laughs> I'm going to start the inking process from the nose, because I feel like the nose is like the sort of central bit that I've keyed in and got correct. It may, that may turn out to be wrong, but let's go for it. Uh, that's right, from this moment on, everything is permanent. Yeah, that's a good nose. Oh. I have a good feeling about this, art fans. I have a good feeling about this. And this kind of comes in around here to there. And then we get this. It's actually quite a tight angle on that. A little further. And this is a nice streak down to there. I'm going to leave the mouth for now. So I feel like these, these lines are the eyes are kind of the, the most important parts to get right. Because, like I say, he's... I, I wanted to challenge myself in this, this aspect, and, and one of the things that I find really difficult is that if I try and capture a lot of detail on a face, it will almost always end up looking older than it in fact is. So I wanted to pick a face that has creases but is not old. So his face has a lot of creases, but he's not an old man. So I don't want him to look like geriatric, because he's not, and that would be a terrible insult to the man. Um, I'm going to start doing the, the old turning of the... Now, of course, this pen is quite thick, so some of these places where there should be a little bit of white, there won't be. But uh, let's not worry about that for now. Very dark eyes, Mark Ruffalo. I'm going to imagine that there's probably a little bit of white just there. And this kind of comes right down into here for that area of the eye to meet up with that. And then we have... Yeah, that, that line actually completely sucks up the, the, the top eye crease. Oof. So the brow line, there's like a sort of dark brow line that comes lower, 
opens up like almost like a, a little angle there. I really need to get that profile locked in, don't I? So let's come around here and get. The, oh no! I've given him a weird lump on his head. <laughs> I ran out of table. This is the problem with doing it upright. I ran out of table, and so I couldn't rest my hand on anything. Uh, so let's come in here. Nice round curve to there. And then this chin comes in so close. Up to like there. See there's another there's another little crease of eye that comes in sort of there. It's got a very I've done too much oh I've done it, I've done that thing where I, I treat it like I'm sketching and I'm not. So all of this is solid brow, and then there's a kind of an almost sort of fluffy bit of brow above that. And this same kind of thing goes on here where you've got this, this kind of dark bit of brow that comes down to here. And there's a sort of fluffy additional part. So that's that's kind of to there solid. Woof. I've picked a very deeply shaded image here, so some of this shading is going to come out as as what what should be brow and some of it should actually be shading, but we're gonna stick with it, we're gonna stick with it, we're gonna we're <laughs> we're all cooking on permanent now. So I really, I really don't want to get this, this secondary line wrong here, but there is a kind of a sort of shading there. Oh, what next? Let's get, we're going to have to tackle that mouth, aren't we? So, like I said, the good bit about the mouth is that the teeth are mostly defined by this bottom line here, which then comes up to a dark area. And that dark area continues there, so... And then after this one, there is kind of a line that goes up. And then a sort of sharp part, and then it goes in. And down here there's a couple of... a bit of darkness there. And then this, this line comes right up here, sort of curls in almost like the Joker, to that part of there. Now we don't need all of this line, because the, the only part of this that really shows is the part that's sort of there, that's the only part that really shows, like in terms of the, 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 the darker area. And similarly, we don't need all of this here. You really only see from kind of there to there. We've got this kind of gum line that comes in. And then the sort of upper lip curve. I feel like we have to draw some of that. We've got to do at least a little bit of the of that part. Let's try and capture this ear. Let's try and capture this ear here. I feel like the ear is a little bit too large actually, because the the ear shouldn't really be much larger than the nose. So let's. Uh, that sort of disappears around that position, so let's come in here for this part. And it's kind of a line that, that starts there, breaks, and then goes in again. And then there's a gap, and you have kind of the dark area, which is sort of... I'm tempted to fill that in because it almost kind of disappears into it. There are a few lines here for the hair. These ones come up to this position. See, all, all this is drawn kind of with curves around the edge. It's all little, little curly sections. This sort of looks a bit like um, 
like a classical composer or, or someone from a historical like a historical figure kind of look um, and we have this here I love this this curl here that's a great great feature very very easy to to kind of key in there that, that feature and a lot of this is not going to be exact to the to the image like I know there are some artists who would do this perfect and exact and they'd get it to look exactly like the actual structure of the hair I'm not that good I don't have what it takes um, so I'm I'm doing it by the sort of the broad strokes of what I can see there which for this is, is mostly a few curls here and there the odd strand anywhere that I see like a, a loop I'm going to try and capture it um, but other than that it's just going to be going for the, the feeling of it more than anything which is a, a sort of curls kind of feeling so obviously I have no definition in the photograph here so I'm, I'm just gonna fill this in I'm, I'm gonna try and shade this hair afterwards because god knows I'm, I'm a glutton for punishment <laughs> this this actually almost doesn't look too bad at this point I'm, I'm tempted to to finish with this this definition of the ear That's not too bad. It doesn't look anything like Mark Ruffalo, as far as I can tell. Um, but it does look like a human face, which is fantastic from, from the point of view of what I'm attempting to do in, in the grander project. Uh, not so great from the perspective of, like, capturing someone's likeness. Should I shade under there a bit more? Should I shade the ear? I'm so tempted to shade that ear because there's a little bit of hair which falls in front of it which I feel like... I mean, now that I've done that I feel like I should shade other things as well so... There's kind of a vague sense of the... Like, let's try and capture some of the... Other spatial details like he's wearing this jacket that kind of comes oh god no well maybe there's a crease there you don't know <laughs> and the neckline of this comes down kind of behind the head here really should have penciled this but we are flying blind at this point and that kind of comes down under the chin this is all darkness but I'm going to imagine that there's a shoulder there What am I missing? I'm missing something. I think it, what, what I'm missing is this line that comes up here. I think that really does sell it. Yeah. That tells you this is Mark Ruffalo. That line. That one line. That's the difference between any random schlub on the street and Mark Ruffalo. You know, this, this eye really does come down lower on the nose and I've not captured that properly. Um... But other than that, I'm kind of I'm kind of pleased with this. I'm kind of pleased with it. Am I going to colour the hair? Of course, I'm going to colour the hair. What kind of a loser wouldn't colour the hair? This, I feel, should be a little bit deeper there. Come over here. So there are areas of this where there's kind of a, a bit showing through, where I want to get some highlights. So like this area here, there's kind of spaces between the curls. I feel like if I, if I draw a sort of pattern of curls in here then if I do it in some places sort of closer together it's almost like hatching except all the hatches have to be curly
recording this. 35 minutes. It takes a lot longer to draw an actual person than it does to do the crappy half faces I've been drawing so far. Because you've got a reference and you kind of have to correct for the reference here and there. There's some curls coming this way here. This, this actually has a sort of curvature to it which I've not captured properly. I'm sort of filling in how I think the hair will be flowing at this point because I'm, I'm not even looking at my reference image. I just want to get a nice a nice idea that gives the texture of what I'm going for. And the texture I'm going for is this kind of mass of sort of dark brown curls. Now that I've got the texture, here's, here's where the clever part comes in. I'm going to deepen that texture in some areas. There's kind of a darker part here. A darker part here. Here. And by doing this, what you get is this, this idea of a sort of shape to it. I'm sort of shaping it as I go. So all this back here, this is very dark, very, very dark hair, so I can really do a number on this bit. This here, there's like a light bit above the ear and it goes dark again until this section here. So let's do this really dark. And then there's this lighter section above. I saw a guy once at an art class and he'd uh, he got this way of drawing where he just basically did a wiggly line. He just didn't take the pen off the paper and he produced some amazing stuff. And it was just kind of like this and he, he would just get closer together where it needed to be shaded darker. Sort of like pointillism but without the points. Pointless pointillism I guess. Um, that crease kind of comes up here. I'm, I'm tempted to fit that in there. And I think... Uh, that bit's in there. This is kind of... I feel like there's, a, there's, a, there's one angled like that there. Which I actually have captured twice. Oh no, that one's that one's that piece, isn't it? So, yeah, I, th I think I'm almost there. Yeah. I th oh, actually, you know, there's a little just here. There's a bit where that line kind of splits down, like that, and there's a similar one here. Again, this, this is my ultimate temptation, is always to add more lines than I perhaps need. So I'm going to stop myself. They say no, work, no true work of art is ever finished, only abandoned. So I'm abandoning this here. Um, eh. Let's, let's erase the pencil and see if it's any better. <laughs> Maybe once we erase the pencil, suddenly the true face will shine out. I'm tempted to put more definition on that lip because I feel like it has it in the picture. Like if I was colouring this, I would certainly colour that lip. 
I was shading it, I would certainly shade that lip. So why am I so scared to contour that lip? Other than the fact that this will probably make it look absolutely terrible. Let's go for it. I'll contour the rest of the lip. Yep, that wrecked it. Oh well. <laughs> this is the kind of lesson that you learn by when you're flying by the seat of your pants and you uh, you swing for the stars and you miss and you land back down to earth with a thud. Yeah, that's Mark Ruffalo, kind of. <sighs> Tomorrow I get to disappoint myself in front of my favourite musician. Yay!